Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. So the whole purpose of this video is to show my first attempt at making the BCB basket. BCB is standing for a biosynosis clarification basket, which is something coined by Dr. Kevin Novak. That's where I first learned about this. Dr. Kevin Novak, from what I could tell, has performed quite a bit of extensive extensive research on um, this whole process. He talks about how the repeat the repeatability is quite high. It's pretty much down to a science. He he knows what he's talking about. So if you want to hear someone who knows what they're talking about, check out Dr. Kevin Novak's channel. So what we're doing is we're getting a an eight inch hydroponic basket. We're, we're placing some kitty litter in it. And then we're gonna sprinkle some laterite powder over the kitty litter. And I went ahead and put some of those clay pebbles that you normally find in a hydroponic setup. Now what I did was I lined the basket with some of the white um, netting mesh that you can find at any uh, craft section of a store that has a craft section. And I sewed it to the I sewed it together into the basket with a monofilament string fishing line is what I used. The kitty litter that I used is fragrance free non clumping kitty litter. It's the Tomcat brand. I couldn't find a type of kitty litter I was looking for at a, at a retail store. I had to go to a to a pet store. Where they sell pet stuff. I'm sure you can get it online as well. Before I before I used the kitty litter, I went ahead and rinsed it off, as you saw, because uh, it is quite dusty. And the the kitty litter we're using it, it pretty much keeps its um, composure. It, it doesn't cl it doesn't clump up, hence the non clumping, and it's fragrance free, which is why I believe it's called fragrance free. Anyways, the type of bacteria that we're trying to grow here is anoxic bacteria. Now, this anoxic bacteria can grow in either aerobic or anaerobic conditions. What we want to do is we want to get the water to flow around the basket, under the basket, a little over the basket. We just don't want to have the, the water flowing through the basket because then that'll, I believe that will create aerobic conditions. Now the benefit of this type of bacteria is going to be that it consumes nitrates. Turns out it also consumes phosphates as well. Another benefit to this is going to be that say if your power goes out, the bacteria is not going to go anywhere for a couple of days. And once you get your power back on, once the water starts flowing, you know, it picks up right where it's left off from what I understand. The laterite clay the um, that's what's really going to help kickstart the bacteria now it should still take a couple months for the bacteria to grow so it's not something that can be utilized right away but the sooner it gets done the sooner it'll be able to be utilized on his channel he also talks about how you can make a plenum and Instead of having this basket in an area of your tank or in a sump, you could basically have a um, an under gravel filter or something equivalent to, and then you just need a little space for the water to flow underneath it. But today we're making just a basket. So what happens is it basically basically creates an ion exchange, which if I speak any more about, we're going to see just how little I actually know about the science of this stuff. And here I am rinsing it out some more. I hope I didn't just rinse out all the laterite powder that I put in there. But I didn't really want that stuff floating around in the sump. This is going to go into a 10 gallon sump that I'm going to be using for a 40 gallon tank that I have. The basket can be found at any uh, hydroponic store as well as the clay pebbles that I used. And over the basket I'm placing another piece of mesh screen just to keep anything from floating out, but it, it doesn't float out. Everything pretty much stays in place. 
and then I go ahead and zip tie it to the basket. Hope I rinse everything out. So we're gonna get a shot of the 40 gallon and there goes the basket there. Sorry I didn't get more of a view on it. This is kind of a stock footage. The sump tank that I'm using is controlled by a doser. I just have it to exchange water from this 40 gallon into the tank, the 10 gallon tank, and then eventually makes its way into the drainage system. One of the pump heads is also utilized to place fresh water in here. He don't claim it could be used to eliminate water changes, but to add a little time in between the water changes. So if you're looking to stop all water changes, uh, I don't think he ever said that that was possible. Again, for more information, check out Dr. Kevin Novak's channel if you're interested. And thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Stay gilded and filled, people. Bye.